Harry and Meghan Markle are feeling the pressure. After countless failures during their ventures in Hollywood, the couple are in Canada to promote the Invictus Games. But instead of really showing off the successful competitors, what the couple come off as is defensive, angry, frustrated about what has happened with the media coverage surrounding them. And while I understand maybe a couple of bits of their frustration, really all of this is a culmination of Harry and Meghan's own actions. They have driven the media to this point and then are angry when the media turns on them, doesn't report what they want them to, and all these sorts of things that are really within Harry and Meghan's control. But they don't seem to understand that. So instead, they blame everybody else for their own failures. And this Invictus Games appearance is no exception. In fact, I would say it's getting even worse, especially in an interview Prince Harry did with ABC News Good Morning America, where he literally showed zero compassion for his family. And when asked about what was going on with all the health crises and everything within the royal family, what he thought about it all, his response initially was, well, I have my own family. It's like, I, I think they're your family too. But Prince Harry is in this spot here where I don't think he understands how the negative media has come about. And so he's blaming everybody else except for himself. And I think at the end of the day, the Invictus Games is going to be what suffers here in this scenario. Because when you look at all the coverage of the Invictus Games, what it seems like is that the whole pitch for the Invictus Games is, look at Meghan Markle's fashion, oh look, and there's Prince Harry there once in a while. And don't you wanna buy tickets now? That ain't gonna work. And I think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are truly starting to feel the pressure of things collapsing around them and are getting incredibly defensive as things don't go well. Because what do you not want to do when things are going badly? Essentially admit that you're in a tough spot, which is what Harry and Meghan are doing. So we're gonna talk about this today, but if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany. I provide you all compelling royal commentary. So if you wanna hit that subscribe button, that would be awesome. We're almost to 142,000 subscribers and I'd love to try to get to 150 by the end of this month or before the second year anniversary of the channel on March 5th or 6th. So if you guys wanna subscribe, that would be awesome. And I also have an upcoming trip to Scotland with those who sign up. It's going to be such a fun and exciting experience. I love Scotland. I think it's an incredible place. And if you haven't been there, you really, really should. Obviously it was one of Her Majesty's most favorite places in the world and she actually did pass away Way in Scotland at her castle in Balmoral. So if you guys are interested in any of that, there will be links down below. It'll be an amazing trip about a week in mid-July. But let's get into all this stuff with Invictus because there's so much going on. It's almost hard to keep track of it. You almost want to do like 12 different videos. But let's pull this all together in sort of one because there's two big things to discuss here. And one is Harry and Meghan's initial reaction to a Telegraph article that they thought was either unfair or they didn't like what was said. And they released this really nasty defensive comment, which I was like, okay, you're just basically confirming what everybody is thinking, which is that you guys are panicking. And that's what that statement screams to me. And then we also have Prince Harry's interview with Good Morning America, which in one section was especially disastrous. In fact, the whole thing I thought was pretty bad. It was even terrible in composition. They had Harry in shadow, the interviewer in the sun when they should have switched because what do we want to see? We want to see Harry. And he just didn't even seem to want to engage that much in the interview. And I'm like, well, why do it? Why have these chorpy, sloppy answers? Like he said some incredibly dumb things and he, he does this dad joke and I'm like, oh, come on, Harry, please. Nobody wants to hear that. It's really dumb and lame. Please stop doing that. So those are sort of the two big things. I did a video yesterday, if you want to check it out, talking about my theory about why Harry and Meghan are seemingly being allowed to take over the Invictus games. Because really, when it comes to Invictus coverage, if you put it in Google, it's about Meghan's fashion, it's about the Royals, it's about Harry, it's not about the competitors. And the problem is, is that the competitors are really the ones who are supposed to sell these games. Without the competitors, does anybody really want to go to the Invictus games? That's a huge question. Because yes, you could see Harry and Meghan if you're a big fan of Harry and Meghan, it's like, yes, you get to see them. But if you have to buy tickets or if you have to sit through Oh, many, many hours of competition, you really don't care about the sport or anything, you may come out with a less than favorable view of the Invictus Games. And so I have a whole theory on that. If you wanna check out that video, I'll link it up above. But when it comes to 
this statement Harry and Meghan made. Now we have a lot going on, especially with the reaction to their website. I think they are truly mystified. In fact, Meghan gave a comment to the web designer company, which I think is just a little ridiculous, talking about how great they are and what great designers they are, as if to deflect from all the criticism the website is getting, which has zero to do with design. It's all about the content, which heavily favors Meghan, has the office of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, has her coat of arms on it. Like there's just so, so many different things on that website that are problematic, especially because her biography is 200 words longer than him. And although I understand why sort of they're not mentioning the royal family, they seem to also forget the only reason why they had the office of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, is because of the royal family. Again, the disconnect between reality and fantasy with Harry and Meghan, very, very broad. They just don't seem to understand why people get so mad at them sometimes. And so this comment showed up. Now it could have showed up earlier on the website. I'm not exactly sure when it was there. I'll have to look it up. And if I figure it out, I'll, I'll make a mention in when I'm editing. But this particular comment, I was like, Meghan Markle doesn't even get it. Or she's just deliberately throwing the designers under the bus, essentially saying that, well, it's their fault. So here's what it says. There's a reason I have worked with Ryan and the talented team at Article for a decade. Their attention to detail, their creativity and care, and the thoughtful approach to design as well as the user experience. They're not just designers, they are collaborators who elevate your ideas into visual identities. They're a very special company, plus they're Canadian, so I'm a fan. Okay, I had to add that little bit there. Probably wasn't very appropriate, but I thought that comment was incredibly stupid because the first thing you did, Meghan Markle, was bolt out of Canada the fastest you could for California and Hollywood because that's where you wanted to be. So this whole idea that she's really connected to Canada, I mean, she lived there, but I don't think really she, at the end of the day, she has that much connection to it, but it's just convenient. But again, you feel this growing defensiveness with the couple because everything they do gets criticized, but for good reason. And the criticism of the website is not the design of the website. Nobody cares. In fact, it's a very simple design. It's honestly not that special. It's a very simple website. Nothing on it is all that like groundbreaking. But the issue there is the content, specifically the coat of arms. You have Megan having the longer biography. Like so many things are the issue of the website. But then now we also have this Telegraph article. And according to Cameron Walker of GBN News, it appears that the couple had a very, very negative reaction to a recent Telegraph article, which I thought was very banal, which is just identifying the problems that they're having. And Harry and Megan definitely didn't like that. And they released a statement, which I'll get to, but let me read you some sections of this Telegraph piece. So one section says, not only is there a marked absence of real working royals from the public eye, the queen and the princess royals soldiering on notwithstanding, but the Duke is fresh from a 30 minute face-to-face -face meeting with his father for the first time since the coronation. His team appears to have reached a truce with the Buckingham Palace aides the Duke distrusts. Neither side has leaked a squeak of information about the meeting so far. Sources close to the Sussexes confirm that the candidate trip is intended to be strictly on message at Invictus with no extra visits around Vancouver on the schedule. But the problem is the Invictus games is not the core message of what Harry and Meghan are getting out there. Yes, are they there to support the Invictus games in theory? Yes, but what is getting out there is always connected to the Royals because Harry and Meghan have created this situation within the media where their dirt on the royal family sells. Their connection to the royal family is what sells them. And that's Harry and Meghan's fault. They could have avoided that by simply leaving the royal family, creating businesses and saying from the jump, we are not gonna say anything about what happened. But no, 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 they went on Oprah. They did a Netflix series on it. Harry did his book Spare and numerous other anecdotes that have gotten through the media about Harry and Meghan's relationship with the royals. Yes, some of it probably came from the royal side, some of it came from Harry and Meghan's side, but Harry and Meghan are the ones that are fueling it. And so how can they be on message when their whole message essentially is, we are former royals, we hate the royal family, please watch us because we think we're important. That's a message Harry and Meghan are selling. And so that's what people are looking for. This GMA interview we'll get to later, I'm like thinking to myself, would GMA be there if they couldn't ask about King Charles? Probably not because Harry and Meghan have created the situation where the only thing that sells for them is their connection to the Royals. And yes, that is always going to be a part of their brand, 
but there are ways to make sure that you individually, that you have set up your own businesses, your own profile that is not connected to the royal family so that when you do something like this, people don't necessarily feel the need to ask you. Yes, they're interested, of course they wanna ask you, but you can actually say, well, I don't wanna answer questions about the royals because it's not necessary here, that's not what the, we're talking about. But a news agency like GMA, which is sending a crew and a journalist and everything to capture them is saying, well, honestly, we can't really come if we're just gonna focus on this. We need to ask you about your father. And to get the coverage, Harry and Meghan might have to say yes, because that's the scenario Harry and Meghan have created for themselves. And we'll get to the GMA interview, but I just wanted to point that out because I don't think Harry and Meghan sometimes understand the conundrum in the media that they are in. And it leads to frustration from them. And it's like, but you guys created this storm. It's all on you. If you don't understand that, Nobody can help you. Goes on to say, with three days out and about stretching ahead, the chances of the Duke being asked about his father are high. He usually takes part in multiple television interviews, as well as being surrounded by endless mobile phone cameras with capability to video and upload his conversations to social media. Palace insiders will be watching from afar with morbid curiosity to see what their cross-Atlantic outpost will say and do. Because yes, even though Harry and Meghan have left, because they refuse to drop the royal titles, because they're still being cosplay royals, they essentially are an outpost of the UK monarchy in the United States because the monarchy itself, the UK monarchy is not doing enough to sever that relationship. They're not doing enough publicly to say, yes, Harry and Meghan may have those titles, but they're not affiliated with us whatsoever. I mean, they again, they can't even take them off the stinking website. Why are they on the website? Like take Andrew off too. I'm not saying just for Harry and Meghan, take Andrew off, take, strip them of their title, strip Andrew off his too, or give them a lesser one or something like that. Harry can be the Earl of Dumbarton and Meghan can be the Countess of Dumbarton. That would make her change her name back to Meghan Markle pretty quickly. And that would be, again, an easy fix. But the monarchy just can't seem to do any of this. And yes, Charles is sick, but this should have been nipped in the bud two years ago, because this is just perpetually getting worse. And yes, Harry doesn't divulge all the details of his family, but the guys can't not talk about it because that is the scenario he has created for himself and Meghan. And so that's not gonna go away. Regardless of what Harry wants to do, he can't make it go away because he has no other way to sell himself and Meghan. They have no other way to sell themselves but being royal again. So I didn't include a paragraph talking about how since Charles is sick, Harry could have, in a different scenario, gone to Canada and shared Charles's message, but of course he can. It goes on to say, in another world, the Duke of Sussex could deliver that message on behalf of the king and country. Instead, he is working freelance, but still wields the power to boost or damage all important international relationships, which is true. That is important. Harry and Meghan, because again, the monarchy will not sever, will not be more punishing on them, is allowing them to potentially dictate international relationships. Why are they doing that? I just don't understand. Yes, the monarchy moves slowly, but Harry and Meghan are not going to stop. And especially now that they've gone back to Sussex, they've gone back to Sussex and left Archwell because Archwell wasn't working and they desperately need those royal titles. That's what's going on here. It is a decade since young Prince Harry, so nervous he was shaking, delivered his inaugural speech at the first Invictus Games in London, his proud father, brother, and stepmother in the crowd. He will now be accompanied by the Duchess fresh from a relaunch of their office with a website fans hope suggests a burst of activity coming. And I'm sure the monarchy is thinking about that with dread in their hearts. The next three days will make or break. More than ever, the Sussexes must make a decision. If they want to salvage a relationship with the remaining royal family, they must prove their discretion. In Powell's terms, that means keeping scrum. But in a world where they need to build their brand to pay for the California mortgage and ever-present security bills, they also need to generate publicity. And again, this is key, and you'll see how this plays into their statement later. I mean, this is make or break for them. They don't have that much else going on. They don't have that much else going on. Megan has her deal with Lemonada, which is a very low-ranking podcast company. That was the best deal she could get, I'm sure. If she could get a better deal with more money, she would have taken it, but she couldn't, so she had to settle for what she could get. Their Netflix deal is in the balance. They've already lost Spotify. I mean, they've already lost potentially millions upon millions of dollars in deals because they're incompetent. 
I know I say that probably a lot, but they are professionally useless people. They don't seem to do anything. And again, this is all culminating in an epic train wreck. And because they need to pay their bills, if they can't sell their own brand and stuff because they're, they, they can't create content, then I've always said what they'll go back to is trashing on the Royals and constantly connecting themselves to the Royals because that's all they have. That is all they have. And they'll do that again and again and again because what else are they going to do? They've created a situation, like they've created this no-win scenario. The Royals are also within this too. There is a no-win scenario here. So... I can bet again, that's Harry and Meghan, and the monarchy again has been complicit in this to a certain extent. It ends with, as an admirable as achievement listed across nearly a thousand words on their website, are Prince Harry, a humanitarian, Meghan, one of the most influential women in the world, they have so far meant little without their royal status. If it sounds complicated, it actually isn't. Promote Invictus, talk about the competitors, save any mention of the royal family to short, warm well wishes, which Harry sort of failed to do. He failed in that endeavor entirely. And if they are in doubt, a quick rereading of their public promises to the late queen should do it. The Sussexes have made clear that everything they do will continue to uphold the values of her majesty. Majesty, their spokesperson said in 2020. You know, that was like six spokespeople ago. <laughs> this is another chance to prove it, which they don't. They don't prove it. They can't do anything without the royal status and they can't do anything. And Harry is a really, really bad interviewee. This GMA interview was bad. It was objectively a bad interview for Harry. Harry sounded clipped. He sounded short. He, he was unlikable. He wasn't even in the light. Like, I mean, come on, GMA. That was a, it was bad. It was just simply bad. But Harry and Meghan... Oh, they are mad about this. So in a statement they put to the press, they said, we've heard time and time again that certain opportunities are make or break for the couple. They're still here. They're still working and pursuing what they believe in despite being constantly challenged and criticized. This couple will not be broken. Do you know what that sounds to me? It sounds really, really defensive. And it sounds to me like they're feeling the heat. They're really feeling the heat to such an extent. It's like, if there's an article out there, just ignore it. I, I, I probably engage with some people too much on Twitter who are like Sussex stands from time to time. But the best way to deal with those people is really just to ignore them. But Harry and Meghan can't seem to do that. And I think that it was in the Telegraph, which is a very premier publication, a very high ranking publication. It rubs salt in the runes even worse. They're really, really struggling here to get their brand together. They are floundering. They're looking at Netflix going, oh my gosh, we might lose this. They've already lost Spotify. They have another audio deal, but it's, it's pretty low tier and they're gonna be responsible for some things that they own normally aren't. And so they might really struggle to bring something to the finish finish line. I mean, again, this is not great for Harry and Meghan, but they only have themselves to blame. They can't really blame anybody else in this scenario except for Harry and Meghan. Those are the only two people they can blame because they have created this environment. If they had kept their mouths shut from the jump, if they had just actually created their own businesses, then they would be fine. But they, they haven't, and so they can't. And I think it goes back to Harry and Meghan being wildly untalented in the fields they're trying to work in. And because of that, the media's like, well, the only thing that's of interest of you to us is your connection to the royals. You haven't really done anything else that's that interesting. And that again is on Harry and Meghan because they are wildly untalented, the two of them. They're completely directionless. I mean, they say things like, oh, we're on mission. You know, we have, we want people to feel like, they have very general banalities that they put to the public, but very little direction. Like, so for me, if I was a royal, I guess. I'm a historian. I'm passionate about saving old buildings. So I'd be passionate about doing that in the UK. And I would focus a lot of my attention on history and artifacts and preserving the history and heritage of England. And so there, there's a clear direction you could go in. Catherine, if you look at her, she focuses on young children. She has an interest in art. And those are the two general paths she's in. And yes, she supports William and his conservation efforts, but she really leaves that to him. And so she has her own tracks. William has his own tracks. Yes, they intersect and they weave in and out, but they have a direction. Harry and Meghan have no direction. And yes, it took Catherine a while, I feel like, to really find her footing but she did. She took her time. Harry and Meghan just give us these wild general and just like fantastical ideals. But then when push comes to shove, nothing really comes of it. And again, that burden is on Harry and Meghan. That burden is on them. So now let's get to the GMA interview because this, 
This gave me some interesting stuff. So let's start off with the first little clip here. Since leaving the royal family nearly four years ago, the Duke and Duchess's every move has made headlines. And just last week, an unexpected diagnosis for Harry's father, King Charles. So I almost feel like in the beginning of this little interview, Harry is like literally shoved. <laughs> They're like, you need to do this. And they shove him over there because he kind of like wanders over there. It's not great. So how did you get the news that the king was ill? Um, I spoke to him. And what did you do next? I jumped on a plane and, and went to go and see him as soon as I could. So he says he got a phone call and then he jumped on a plane as soon as he could. Now, given that he arrived just like a day later, I don't think Harry got the news until right before the media did. And then he went out. And when you go throughout this interview, it becomes very, very clear too that really going to visit his father was kind of a publicity stunt. But I feel like his clipped answers here are really telling. This is not how he should be answering these questions because what you should do in a good interview, if you are the person being interviewed, is that you should be able to manage the conversation. And Harry's very short, like he doesn't wanna talk about it. Then don't get asked either A, or prep with your PR team about how to talk about it right now. Not just this, like you feel like he has no prep for this whatsoever and he's kind of like, you know, he's kind of tense getting these questions. It's like, well, did you not prep for this? And again, the composition of this interview, I just want to scream because Harry's in shadow. So it's hard to get a feel for his facial reactions because he's entirely in shadow. I'm like, who composed this? This is terrible. And the interview just gets more and more awkward. How was that visit for you emotionally? Um, look, I, 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 love, I love my family. The fact, that I was have, the fact that I was able to get on a plane and go and see him and spend any time with him, I'm grateful for that. What's sort of your outlook on, on his health? That stays between me and him. Well, he is good there where he doesn't admit, well, I, I'm not gonna talk about his prognosis. Feels like he goes, I love my family. And I was like, oh, buddy, we don't feel it. And it gets worse later. But it's like, you, you don't feel it. And it feels like he's not really totally there. And so it just wasn't very good. And again, he he's comes off as just a little bit frustrated in the interview. And it's like, but you asked them to be here. And probably the only reason they're there is to ask you about this because this is the scenario you've created. And yes, they do an entirely different segment on the Invictus Games, but I'm gonna bet you bottom to dollar that the section on the rails will be outplayed 10 times by the Invictus Games stuff because that's the chaos Harry and Meghan have created, is that. Nobody cares about the Invictus Games because it's all about what you can get on Harry and Meghan. And again, that's Harry and Meghan's fault. It's not totally the media's fault, it's Harry and Meghan's fault too. An illness in the family can have a galvanizing or sort of reunifying effect for a family. Absolutely. Is that possible in this case? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm so he's like, you know, asking, will, you, will things be unifying? Harry's like, well, sure, I guess. <laughs> you know, again, you get the feeling that he's not all that interested or doesn't want to do it unless he can get something out of it. Throughout all these families, I see it on a day-to-day on -day basis. Um, you know, the, again, the, the strength of the, of the family unit coming together. Okay, and that little bit is totally and completely disingenuous. So it's like, well, you know, the family can be a great support for each other. I was like, yeah, but you crapped all over your family. Well, no, what? Like, they're not going to be like the Invictus people because you have nothing in common. They probably didn't go on Facebook and tell everybody how terrible their family was and then come back and go, well, why are you mad at me? You know, people just don't do that. And so Harry and Meghan going on international television multiple times to talk about how terrible his family is and he's shocked that they don't want to talk to him or that it's tough to get, you know, the family reunified. I, th I think it was a cr incredibly... It, it was an okay question, but not great either. And again, you almost feel like Will is like terrified to offend him. And it's like, they shouldn't be terrified to offend you. That's, that's not how the interview should go. Just physically being in California, how have you processed the fact that there's so much happening back uh, with your family where you come from? Okay, I thought that was so weird when he goes, back to your family, where you come from. Like the UK, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, like, what is going on here with this dumb interview? It's it's such actually a bad interview in my opinion, both Harry as an interviewee and the interviewer. Both of them are pretty bad and awkward in this situation. I have my own family. Right. Did you catch that? Asked about his family's crisis. He's like, but I have my own family. I was like, but your father has cancer. Your sister-in-law had severe abdominal surgery and is recovering for several months. And your response is, well, you know, essentially is, well, they're not my family. That's essentially what he's saying. He's essentially saying, 
They're not my family. I have my own family. But, you know, just saying, because Harry was married within the Church of England, the Bible does say, honor your father and mother. So you may have treasures in heaven. He is not honoring his father and mother. <laughs> he is not. And yes, obviously his mother has passed away, but he's not really honoring his father there in that instance by going, well, I have my own family. But all of us are part of an extended family in one way or another. And I think completely dismissing and cutting off other family members, I just don't think is a very good way to go. I think it makes Harry look just terrible. He just looks terrible in this instance. And I just can't help but look at him and go, dude, what were you thinking with that response? What were you thinking? That is an awful, horrendous response from Harry. Golly, I just can't imagine the stupidity of that response. It's terrible. And it just comes across as, well, my family's important too. It's like, well, yeah, but your father also has cancer. So I think you should think about them too from time to time. Don't you, don't you think? Well, as we all do, yeah. right? So, um, you know, my family and my life in California is, is, is as it is. You know, I will, I've got you know, other trips planned um, that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll stop in and, and see my family as much as I can. So, well, he'll stop by the UK from time to time, but he's not seeing any of his family, really. They, they, none of them will see him. So again, Harry looks just incredibly bad in these answers. He just does. He just does. They, they don't see him, they don't want to see him, and Harry just looks incredibly bad in these responses. And again, he's talking about, well, I have my family in California. And it's like, but yeah, you would also abandon your family in the UK and wouldn't it be you know, appropriate at some point to try to reconnect with them because you were previously very close. It's, it's you know, kind of your wife that's created this conundrum and you, you and your wife. So you're the ones who are distant, you are the ones who are separated and essentially confirms that he doesn't talk to anybody in his family. He doesn't. The guy doesn't talk to anyone in his family because his family is now Meghan Markle, solely, solely. That's my next question about your family. How's Harry the dad? How's what? How's, How's Harry the dad? the dad? I can't tell you, that's classified. Okay, you it's know, super, you know, top right? secret? It's top secret. Really? Ah, Harry, I can tell you, that's classified. Oh my gosh, I find that so incredibly stupid and I find it like a dumb dad joke, like a really, really dumb dad joke. And this is the second time he's done that this year because at the Living Legends of Aviation Award, he also tried to pull the similar stunt. And I was like, dude, Come on now, like that's just stupid. Oh, it's classified. I just, I just find that just so incredibly dumb, lame, stupid. Like answer the question. Don't try to go with a dumb jab. It's like that your kids, I mean, I guess he's kind of trying to reference the military stuff, but still that's just awkward and weird. It's just awkward and weird. It's like, well, it's classified. I'm like, just tell people, like, again, and it gets stranger too. No, the kids, Making lunches the, kids and... the kids are doing great. The kids are growing up like all kids do very, very fast. Um, they've both got an incredible sense of humor and, you know, make us laugh and keep us grounded every single day like most, most kids do. So, um, yeah, I'm just very grateful to be a dad. So what I find interesting from that little clip is him talking about them having a sense of humor. Just as a reminder, They'll turn three and five this year, but right now they are two and four. Now, granted, maybe a four-year-old can somewhat have a good, great sense of humor, but they're also two and four. I talk about a great sense of humor for like an older child, like 10, 11, 12, or most likely an adult. That's something you talk about with an adult. A child, yes, they're silly. Yes, they're fun. Yes, they're funny. And yes, maybe they have, they have a sense of humor, but I doubt at this point they have like a great sense of humor because I feel like good humor comes from life experience. And so yes, I'm sure may maybe Archie is pulling pranks, but I wouldn't call that a great sense of humor. He's, he's four, almost five. So he's doing what most four and five year olds do, which is have like a great for both of them too. I mean, well, they keep us laughing. I mean, I think it was more of a slip of the tongue, but that's something you talk about with an adult. And I feel like Harry and Meghan do that a lot. They talk about their children as if they're adults, which they're not. He could just say, they make me laugh every day. I just love every second of being a dad. It is the most awesome and wonderful experience of my life. And I am so, so glad to be a father. I mean, that's actually a much better answer than what Harry gave. Like, seriously, who is part of their PR team helping him? Or are they all helping Megan now? Does it not matter what Harry says or does? Like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And again, I've done a lot of interviews. These are terrible, 
terrible responses from Harry. When you interview people, you get different reactions to things. Some people give really long answers. Some people give really short answers. I interviewed this woman once and I only got to answer about three questions and I was on the phone for like an hour and a half with her. Cause one time she answered a, a question, went on and on and on for 45 minutes and I should have stopped it. That was my fault. But she just meandered, meandered, meandered. And I think I tried to interrupt. I think I had to tell her my computer was about to die to get her off the phone. <laughs> which is terrible. But that was like the only thing I could think of. And it was like about to die because I did like dictation with it. So I'd put my phone there so it could dictate as people were talking. And I also had somebody who was like very, very short and clipped and she was very professional, not saying she wasn't, but every response was two minutes, which is about what they should say. Every response should be about two minutes. And she hit that mark like every single time. And I was like, give me just a smidge more because some people will give you more which is fun sometimes the answers are short sometimes they're long sometimes if they're a bit more of a talker you can get some interesting answers out of them but again this is a poorly constructed interview on both sides both sides it's very bad harry especially i think doesn't come off well here how are you enjoying your time living in the u.s it's amazing i love every single day okay so he's like it's amazing i love every single day of living in the united states but i don't really feel it it's hard to tell from his expression but he doesn't really smile he's like yeah i love america it's awesome <laughs> don't you want to smile <laughs> but it's hard to tell too because his face is in shadow again which is stupid composition from the journalists i don't know why we couldn't change that like they should know like the camera guy should know where the sun is and everything Again, very irritated. But it also gets funny here because it's like, you can tell Will, who's the interviewee, Will Reeve, who's the son of Christopher Reeve, for, the former Superman who ended up dying, he doesn't really understand royalty. Do you feel American? Uh, do I feel American? Um, no, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> so again, Harry doesn't really have a good response to that question. It's, honestly, it is kind of a dumb question. I mean, it kind of makes sense, it kind of doesn't, but still. Would you think about becoming a citizen? It's, I, have, I have considered it, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Will you become a citizen? I guess. <laughs> well, he says yeah, but if he says yeah and he does it, he loses his royal title and he also has re to renounce his father. There's a clip of Emily Blunt, which I'll try to find and put in here, where she talks about how she had to renounce the queen. So go ahead and take a listen here. Actually, as I was getting sworn in, I was like this, hearing the things I had to do, things like renouncing my queen. Oh, you had to renounce your queen, yeah. Which is horrible. Oh. Queen Elizabeth was just like. How do you do it? <laughs> well, you just have to say that you renounce any other sovereign, and it wasn't specifically oh. Queenie, okay. but she knows. The thing that's weird is that you actually, I do get to keep both my British citizenship and this, but you have to renounce her, so, but it's kind of typically American, not to be rude. <laughs> but I had to renounce her in the room, but I don't actually technically renounce her, but it was like, they were like, just say it, you don't have to mean it, but just. If Emily Blunt has to renounce the queen, Harry this time has to renounce the king, which is his father. I mean, again, it's not gonna happen. And Harry and Meghan have just made a big fuss about naming their kids Sussex, so why would they give up? Why would they give that up for Harry to get citizenship unless he gets an additional benefit from it? But again, if he becomes a citizen and everything, it might make things more challenging if he wants to leave. Who knows? What would, what would stop you from doing it? I have no idea. I, that's, I'm, I'm here standing next to this with these guys. And the American citizenship is, <laughs> is, is, a, is a thought that has crossed my mind, but certainly not something that's a high priority for me right now. So it's weird because I feel like Harry's shifting and saying that the soldiers here who are, you know, working on being competitors, that the American soldiers are somehow making him want to be a U.S. citizen, which like makes no sense. Like, shouldn't it be your wife who's making you want to be that or for your kid? And not that he has to bring his wife into anything. I mean, I'm not even sure why she's there. She didn't feature in the interview, which was good, but also too, and then again, a huge question of why is she there so she can wear a $3,000 Hermes coat? Like, come on. But I think again, it's just a little odd. Like, why would the U.S. veterans want to make you become a U.S. citizen? Don't you have veterans in your own country? I think you do. Aside from Invictus, what else are you, what's keeping you busy when you're out of the house? <laughs> everything. Yeah? Everything in the house, everything outside the house. Um, so no, the, the, the mission continues and every, every element of the work continues. And again, this comes back to having a decent media PR strategy. What does Harry do? He's like, well, I'm busy inside the house and outside of the house. What does that mean? If I'm a business person investing in you and you just say you're busy, well, what does that mean? What are you working on? They need to be able 
to sell what they're doing and they can't do it. And you'll see too that Harry goes immediately into the Invictus Games in 2025, which is good. He's shifting to the Invictus Games, which is sort of good in the interview because you kind of want to have the interview be something where you, you control aspects of it. But again, it raises some really, really fascinating questions about what the future holds for Harry and Meghan. Because it sounds like Prince Harry especially has a nothing sandwich going on at home. And so he just says he's busy. But how are you busy? What are you doing? Again, it's all about strategy, PR, professionalism, all these sorts of things, which appear to be failing for Harry and Meghan. And before you know it, February next year, this time in a year's time, we're gonna be right here doing all this again. Hopefully you'll be here. Um, and we're gonna have the whole of uh, Whistler and hopefully the whole of Canada screaming these guys on for, uh, for an epic games. Well, Harry, I hate to tell you, bud, but I just don't know if all of Canada will be there screaming you on. Why? Well, because you've kind of made it impossible for them to do that. Harry and Meghan's obsession with themselves and with the royals and getting vengeance on them has resulted in a brand that is wildly inconsistent and wildly toxic. And because of that, it's really, really hard for people to engage in what they're doing. So even if the Invictus Games is great, people will stay away just because of Harry and Meghan. So are you a benefit or a detriment to the games? Because right now your favorabilities are exceedingly low. And yes, the veterans are there, but you've also made this whole publicity tour about yourself. So how are the veterans supposed to benefit from your personal self publicity tour? Well, the answer is they're probably not going to benefit. And so the question becomes, what is Harry and Meghan's strategy here? How are they going to help the veterans or are they just continuing going to help themselves? Like, this is a huge question. Harry and Meghan need to figure out what they want to do and they need to stop ragging on the Royals and really come up with a solid, a solid business strategy that does not require them to say anything about the Royals, like they can do their own thing and that they can be solid without ragging on the monarchy. But Harry and Meghan just can't seem to do that. In fact, they're doubling down on the Royal connections rather than separating them. And you can feel the continual frustration and the defensiveness as things continue to go off the rails and Harry and Meghan are desperately trying to right the ship. But they can never seem to do that because they started off on the wrong foot to begin with. And again, I think it would be hugely beneficial for them to voluntarily say, we will not use the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. We will just be Prince Harry and Meghan. And you don't have to t call us Duchess Meghan. Like in the GMA interview, they had to call him the Duke of Sussex all the time. And Meghan, at one point, they called her Duchess Meghan. Like, come on on. You can either can stand on your own or you're constantly, constantly utilizing your family connections in order to stay relevant. If you can't stand on your own two feet, well then that's on you. And so Harry and Meghan have this huge decision to make and it is make or break for them because their favorabilities are bad. Nobody really likes them. And yet they're continuing going down the same path that they have this entire time. And yes, they're trying to change up things a bit, but I don't think it will be enough. And I think they're just going to end up in a just massive train wreck. So guys, then let me know what you think of Harry Megan's very defensive statement against the press. I would love to get your thoughts. Thanks for watching again, and I will see you soon. Bye.